Hi there, thanks for coming to my session today. This is high intensity scripting, where we're going to look at how you can optimize your scripts for speed and whether or not PowerShell 7 influences that at all. I'm Josh King, I'm a sysadmin from down here in New Zealand. I'm also a Microsoft MVP, and you can find me online at Windows NZ or on my blog, toastit.dev. Um, if you've got any questions, I'm in chat, so fire them through or afterwards hit me up on Twitter. Now, if I or this topic sound familiar, it's because in 2018 I presented at this event, um, Whip Your Scripts Into Shape. And back then um, we focused solely on Windows PowerShell. Uh, what's changed since then? Well, we've got PowerShell 7. And it does some pretty amazing things, so we need to find out whether it's magic or not. Uh, down the bottom of the my slide there, you'll see a toast.click link. That'll take you to the recording of the previous talk, if you want to go check that out. So, given we've already covered some of the stuff in the past, there's some fundamentals that we're not going to retest. First of all, displaying output is slow. Um, if you can avoid displaying stuff to screen, do that and your script will naturally run, naturally run faster. Um, there's the old adage, filter left, format right. That holds very true. And that's mainly just because you're doing the heavy lifting up front to weed out the stuff you don't care about so you don't have to process it later on. And of course, it's that processing later on of the stuff you don't need that's going to chew up some time. And running in parallel is usually a winner. There are caveats there. Say your workload is so trivial that it takes more time to spin up the uh, parallel task runners um, than it does to actually run the code. Um, but generally speaking, run things in parallel um, and it'll sweep things up dramatically. Now, of course, elephant in the room, why, why worry about speed and PowerShell? Um, for me, it's a fun topic. Um, and if you've been on Twitter lately, you'll probably have seen people um, lately focusing on the speed of loading their PowerShell profiles. So I know Steve Lee from the PowerShell team posted a blog post about it. Fairly certain that um, Chrissy Lemire is working on something. Um, yeah, so it's a topical topic at the moment. Um, but it's also PowerShell being slow is a common complaint. Um, I included a screenshot of a Google search for PowerShell slow in 2018. In the last three years, there's now a million extra results when you search for that. And I think the little snippet that Google picked out there is pretty apt, where it's basically saying PowerShell is built for convenience rather than speed. Um, that's true. PowerShell does do a lot of heavy lifting for you that other languages wouldn't, um, making it more convenient to run. Um, but there are still some speed gains you can get with some little tweaks in your scripts. So it's always important to think about how you're testing things. Um, if you're looking for improvements, you've got to measure it. Um, sure, something may feel faster, but you never know how much gains you're making unless you're taking measurements before and after a change. And you'll notice I said, ah, change. So make one change at a time. If you make more than one change, you're never going to know what change actually sped things up for you. Um, it's just like any troubleshooting IT. You don't replace your network interface, your cable, and your switch all at the same time because it was probably just a kink in the cable. Um, and test more than once. Um, there are a lot of environmental variables that influence how your tests run. Um, I'm running these tests on my personal workstation. Um, you might run them on your laptop or a server. 
every environment's different. Every environment has other things running on them. And little minute-to-minute changes can dramatically impact your testing. So test lots and lots and lots, or as much as you can, and compare multiple result sets. And the act of measuring things can potentially slow things down. So just be aware of that. Try and limit the impact that you have on your performance by the act of measuring the performance. Now, time for some code. Let me jump over to VS Code. And the first thing we're going to look at is actually a revisit from 2018, and that's about verbosity. So, let me just pull some stuff up here. People often complain, especially on Twitter, that PowerShell is way too verbose. Why do I need to type these long commands and blah, 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 blah. It is possible to shorten down your commands. Is it a smart idea? Well, let's find out. So on the left here, I have a piece of code that's getting um, services only those that are running, and then I'm just going to pick the first five of them and save them into a variable. Now you'll notice on the left, I'm just using the word service, whereas on the right, which is the verbose option, I'm using get dash service. Here, I'm using a question mark instead of where object, and select instead of select object. I'm also only doing dash f because that's enough to tell it that I want the first five. So I'm taking a little bit more time to explain things in this first example just so we can find our feet. Um, when I run these I'm running it through a module that I've created that just helps orchestrate things and get results up on a dashboard. Um, so what you're going to see is a hash table that just sets up the tests. And um, gives some metadata for the dashboard. So you can see I've got a title. My control is always the script you see on the left. Um, and my variance is almost, or my variant is always the one on the right. There are some caveats there. For example, this first one, I am running the same script twice, but you'll see that I'm running it on two different hosts. So for the first test, I'm running just this alias code on both Power Windows PowerShell and PowerShell 7.1. Um, I do put some notes in there to show what test is actually running so my control is Windows PowerShell using shorthand and my variance is PowerShell 7.1 using shorthand. Um, the only other thing here is iterations. So that tells you how many times I'm running the code for both the control and the variance before spitting out my results to the dashboard. So let's go ahead and run the first one. And while that's running, I'll pull up my results dashboard. So we're looking at verbosity. First up, comparing Windows PowerShell, PowerShell 7. Our Windows PowerShell results were already in. And the tests took an average of six and a half milliseconds on Windows PowerShell down here. Whoa, didn't mean to select all of that six and a half milliseconds on in the middle column is our variation which is PowerShell 7.1 and you can see it took a whole 30 milliseconds longer um, and just to put that into context 456 percent that means PowerShell 7 using that same code four times slower if my maths works out there, four and a half times slower. Now, that's not great. 
but let's see how um, being a bit more verbose helps us. So if I come down here, our second test, both PowerShell 7.1, we're going to see how this code using aliases and shorthand compares to being a lot more verbose. Again, running it a hundred times. So let's go ahead and run that and jump back into our dashboard. We're going to wait for the PowerShell 7 code to show up. That time it took an average of 40 milliseconds. And in a moment, you can see we shaved off over 20% of our runtime by being more verbose. Now, unfortunately, um, you'll notice that even being verbose, this is slower than the PowerShell code, uh, the Windows PowerShell code. And I don't know the technical reason for that. Um, in all honesty, going into this, that wasn't what I expected to find out. Um, in fact, a few people watching this at the moment that it might be in chat can probably attest to um, the various stages of grief I went through in preparing this talk um, because a lot of the tests didn't come out how I expected them to. So I was making assumptions, running code, and assuming things were wrong. Um, then I tested on multiple serve, multiple machines, multiple testing methodologies. Turns out that's just how it runs. Um, and some of these tests, as we go through them, may even surprise me today, even though I've tested these out a few times. So that's verbosity. We can see um, being verbose is quicker than using those shorthands. Um, so it does pay when you're writing a script, just tab complete your stuff, spell it out. <laughs> now, one of the questions that you might get or that you might have, having looked at that um, previous example, is could the pipeline, because there was a few of them in that previous example, be to blame? Uh, so let's find out. This time we're doing the same operation between our control and our variance. I'm getting all of the items in my temp folder on my C drive. And then I'm filtering to get only the files over a given length. In my control, I'm piping to where object. In my variants, I know it's hard to see that all at once, but I'll scroll across it slowly. I'm still doing the same get child item, still recursing through that temp folder, but then rather than piping to where object, I'm using this dot where method and calling my filter in there. So I'm checking the code on the left against the code on the right, both in PowerShell 7, testing it a hundred times. Let's see how that goes. Let's pull up the results. So again, on the left, our control pipeline, the middle column is our variation where we're using a method. So using the pipeline, it took an average of 90 milliseconds down here. And then by chunking that away, or by avoiding the use of the pipeline um, and going to use the where method, we're down to 65 milliseconds on average. So savings of about a quarter. Now, that's just a reasonably small folder on my C drive. Um, and you can see I've saved like 35 milliseconds. These these differences scale in different ways. So some of them are going to be linear if you go to a bigger um, 
if you go to a bigger directory or across an entire file system, you might find that it's always about 25, 26, 27% faster using the method. It might get exponentially faster or they might converge at a certain point and using the pipeline might end up faster. Um, and later on, we do see an example of that in a bit better detail. So that's a nice quick one. We don't have a second pipeline thing there. Next up. I mentioned that displaying output is slow. And naturally the naturally when you know output slow you're going to want to suppress it so if something outputs some information that you don't want i.e you're not going to save it into a variable you just want to get rid of it um, so generally you're going to assign or somehow nullify that information so these two examples both create a array list. We're going to look at array lists a little bit closer later on. We're going to create a random number generator and then we're going to create a thousand random numbers and add it to our collection. Each time we call this add method we get some output saying what the index of that item we just added was. So on the difference between the two, our control and our variance, is on the right, we assign to out now. Sorry, we pipe to out now. And then on the right, we assign to dollar sign now. Now, last time I ran through this, assigning to null or redirecting to null was dramatically faster than alt null out null. What I'm really interested in finding out is in PowerShell 7, is this faster now? My assumption going into this is no, but let's find out. So up first, just testing the left hand side, both going to out null. So both going to out now, but we're comparing PowerShell 5 to PowerShell 7. And we don't remember if the previous tests were running 100 times or 1,000 times, but this one's running 1,000 times. So let's go ahead and get that started and pull up the results. So silence is golden. Let's... Now, of course, these talks are pre-recorded for the Shares PowerShell Summit. So depending on how long the tests take, there might be some awkward cuts. <laughs> I'll try and avoid them as best as possible. But some of them just take a little bit longer. All right, we've got our results back from piping to out null in Windows PowerShell. That was taking about 50 milliseconds each time and then PowerShell 7 much quicker much quicker 12 and a half milliseconds a 54 percent speed increase <laughs> sorry I just realized I didn't actually um, mention what the minus means <laughs> in the percentages. Um, so of course a minus percentage means a percentage decrease. Um, so between PowerShell 7.1 and Windows PowerShell, this, the time required decreased by 75%. So Looks like uh, they did manage to pull some magic out of their hat when creating PowerShell 7. So, question then is, is there still a benefit in assigning to dollar sign null? And let's test that. 
Um, just to speed this up a bit, I'm going to drop a zero off the amount of iterations this time. But this time, comparing out null to assign null, both in PowerShell 7, doing it a hundred times, just to speed things up a touch. So let's run that. Pull up the dashboard. So both PowerShell 7. Oh, that came back much faster. So that's our expected 14 milliseconds. But assigning to null is still a heck of a lot faster. Um, so we're looking at one and a half milliseconds. Or a 90% speed increase. Um, speed increase, elapsed time decrease. Forgive me, green's good, <laughs> speed increase. Um, so what you can take away from that is if you want to pipe to out now, you shouldn't feel guilty about it. Um, it is a lot faster than it used to be. Um, but if you're looking for speed, you can assign to now. Or, if you know how, redirect to null. Um, I'm not going to cover that um, test case. I did in the previous talk, so if you're interested, go have a look at that. Now, groupies. So, we saw there uh, piping to out now was slower than another method. So let's dive in a little bit and see if um, using commandlets like out now, uh, let's see if using those is always a bad idea. So for our control here, we're going to run this for each object a thousand times by just pumping a thousand numbers into it. Each time the for each loop runs, we're going to be generating a random number of between one and 10,000. Actually, let's drop that down a bit. There we go, between one and a hundred. Then those numbers are passed down the pipeline into group object. So let's see the difference running this code between PowerShell 5 and PowerShell 7. So PowerShell, Windows PowerShell came back nice and fast. Each iteration took about 180 milliseconds. Exact same code, PowerShell 7.1, 100 milliseconds quicker. So 54% 54, 54 faster. So no, um, commandlets aren't inherently bad. Um, in fact, when they've been tuned up internally, um, they can be quite fast in comparison to what they were. Now... That example is one of those ones where the scale or the magnitude of what you're working on really does make a difference. So this is a reasonably large data set and the speed increase does get bigger as your um, data set gets larger. What about a small data set? So if I'm just looking at my services and I want to group them on their status, well, I didn't update this. Oh dear, let me do that quickly. There we go, much better. So let's see the difference running this get service grouping on the status between PowerShell 5 and PowerShell 7. So we just saw a 54% speed increase on our previous test. 
Let's see what we get on this one. So again, still comparing Windows PowerShell to PowerShell 7. The smaller code, the smaller data set, ran in Windows PowerShell in just 9 milliseconds. Windows, uh, sorry, PowerShell 7.1 on the other hand, yeah, <laughs> that's not looking too good. So there's definitely a point where they converge and swap um, positions. Um, and PowerShell 7 does rapidly run ahead. But at that very low end, um, Windows PowerShell still takes the cake. It's very interesting. And <laughs> this was one of my main sources of grief because this big of a difference isn't something I was expecting going into uh, prepping this talk. Now, if you're feeling adventurous, one of the things you can consider is taking the safety blankets off and looking at running raw.net um, code um, classes and functions and whatnot um, that give you the same result as some commandlets. So generally speaking, you need to do a bit more work to do that. You need to have a bit more knowledge of um, what you're trying to do, how you can achieve it. But is it worth it? So our first uh, script here is going to generate us a thousand guilds. And all we're going to do is see how that runs between PowerShell 5 and PowerShell 7. And we'll see if there's been um, another magic tune-up where new GUID runs faster uh, in 7.1. So already, Windows PowerShell's back, 63 milliseconds. And only slightly faster, not really enough to worry about, really. Um, but PowerShell 7.1 was just that touch faster. But that's just running the command loop. What if we do decide um, to bear all and use some naked.net? Um, so rather than the command loop, let's use the GUID class and call new GUID. And for this, we're going to compare the code on the left to the code on the right, both in PowerShell 7. Uh, code on the left, code on the right, PowerShell 7, good. That's as much me telling you what I'm running as making sure I know that I've put the right stuff in there. <laughs> so let's run that. Pull up my results dashboard. Both PowerShell 7.1, good. The commandlet, 67 milliseconds. And this is always funny to see sub millisecond to generate a thousand GUIDs. 98, almost 99% faster. Massive. Um, in general, going the .NET route is going to be faster, but for a lot of people it's going to be slower to write. Um, you might not have as much confidence in knowing what your code's actually doing. But if you can make that leap, boy, will your scripts be lightning fast. And I believe that's all for GUIDs. Yes, cool. So... We used an array list earlier in uh, this presentation. It looked a little something like this. We recreated a new object and we added items to it. 
that is my go-to for creating collections of objects. Um, what you'll see quite often, however, is a collection defined with um, the ampersand and brackets, and then just using plus equals to assign things into it. Um, and you'll often hear opinions about that. Um, you're about to see why people have opinions about that. Um, it is, I can tell you now, it's just less efficient <laughs> doing it this way. But we have seen that some magic has been pulled in PowerShell 7. So is there any chance this plus equals construct has had a tune up? Well, let's find out. So we're going to go with a standard array, and our first test is doing that array in both PowerShell 5 and PowerShell 7. Run the code, pull up the dashboard. So doing the plus equals assignment um, in that test took 45 milliseconds. And it is technically faster in PowerShell 7.1. Um, even in my practicing for this, that is probably the best result I've seen for PowerShell 7.1 um, in this test ever. Um, but there you go, 43% uh, faster. Um, but let's see how much faster the array collection is. I'm not even going to sugarcoat that. Let's see how much faster it is. Um, so we're comparing an array to an array list, uh, both in PowerShell 7. Back to the dashboard. And this should be nice and quick. There we go. This is our 36 for there. And another one like the .NET. Um, example dramatically faster um, now if you don't know why oh, and I'll verbalize that 94% faster going from just a standard array to an array list there are other constructs you can use which you can eke out extra performance um, this is my this is my go-to because I find it easiest to remember and use. Um, there are opinions out there about even faster ways to go. Um, now the reason why this is faster is these array lists can be dynamically resized. And I'm oversimplifying things here, forgive me. There's people in the chat here that are vastly more um, on top of this uh, at a very technical level than I um, it can be resized you can just add new items in and it just chomp 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 grows 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 with the standard array over here it's a fixed size so despite the fact that you're adding something new into it what it's actually doing every time is throwing that old collection away and creating a brand new one at a new fixed size. Then you add another item, it throws the old one away, constructs a whole new array with the new fixed size, and it just repeats that process, and it's resource intensive. Um, this is one of, a lot of these things, I would say it's personal preference. This is the one where I would say if you can pull something into your day-to-day, Start using array lists. Um, getting rid of the plus equals is a bit of a habit to break. Um, and having to remember to hide the output is a bit of a bear. But in my opinion, it's worth it. Now, let's download some stuff. So, I have stored a dummy 20 megabit 20 megabyte file in an Azure 
storage account. And I'm going to download it. And I'm going to see how fast um, Windows PowerShell and PowerShell 7 downloads it. And is there a difference? So first up, we're just creating a new temporary file. We're downloading that 20 megabyte file into it using invoke web, web request. And we're going to do that 10 times. See the difference. Um, comparing, obviously, Windows PowerShell, PowerShell 7.1. Let's run that. And this one is going to take a while, so let's have a quick jump cut. All right, so Windows PowerShell's come back with a fairly respectable uh, two and a half ish seconds. Um, now, the this Azure storage is located fairly close to me. It's over in Australia. I'm on a gigabit internet connection, so in theory, twenty megabytes should be a blink and you miss it thing. Um, and if you remove PowerShell from the equation, it is a blink and you miss it thing. Um, now, Windows uh, PowerShell seven point one is going to take a wee bit longer assuming my test runs of this hold true. So let's cut back when that one's done. And there we go. PowerShell 7.1's come back with an average of just over six seconds per download. Um, over double the amount of time from Windows PowerShell. So why? Um, since Windows PowerShell, there's been some changes to how um, my understanding is there's been some changes to how uh, progress bars work, and that can slow things down. So let's see, both in PowerShell 7.1, if we turn off progress bars and then turn them back on when we're done. Can we download those same files 10 times any faster? Uh, let's see. All right, so yeah, show me the progress. Maybe don't. Um, this is going to take a while. I'll see you in a moment. All right, so PowerShell 7.1 with progress bars has come back. It's actually a little bit faster than it was um, in our last run and that's the uh, always the case with running tests multiple times but now our second the variation should come back soon the um, and that's the one with progress bars turned off um, while that's running I've run this test many, many, many times now. It is very variable, and I'm not happy with that. <laughs> Sometimes it equals the progress bars. Sometimes it's a fair amount quicker. And this time, it's slightly slower. So the moral of the story there is... Um, Again, if you have to download files, there's, there is better ways of doing it than with Invoke Web Request. Um, one of the fastest ways I've found, and I'm not testing it here, is to um, create a web client uh, instance, uh, the .NET um, web client, and download through that. Probably should have included a test for it. Um, but if you're interested, there's uh, plenty of documentation online for it. So we're down to the home straight. Um, peek behind the curtains. I haven't actually been using parallelization for these tests. Um, I thought it might have been interfering with the numbers I was getting, um, especially on that download one. So all of these tests have been running in series. Um, 
hence why some of them take quite a while. <laughs> but running things in parallel will speed things up unless you're doing something so trivial that it takes more time and resources to spin up multiple instances of whatever needs to run your workload than what would it than what it would take to just run your workload for this test um i wanted to check my go-to option for running things in powershell uh, running things in powershell in parallel posh rs job against the new option in powershell 7 which is the for each object um, loop with the dash parallel parameter. So both of these scripts, let's give ourselves a bit more room. Both of these scripts just have a long list of targets that we're going to go out to the internet and we're going to test for a connection against them. Um, and for each of those, we report back an object with the name of what we were trying to reach and whether or not it's online. On the left, we're doing this with posh RS job. So we pipe our targets into start RS job. We tell it only run five at a time. Here's the code to run in a script block. Wait for the jobs to finish and receive the output. Cool. Our variant script has the same list of targets although now we're piping it into for each object and it has to be piped into for each object not the for each language statement which looks like that because the for each object commandlet now has a parallel option which you can give your script block to uh, and same between the two I've got a throttle limit of five so I've got 20 targets there I only want it to be able to touch five of them at a time and in theory when one of them drops off it'll bring another one from the pool in and just work through them until all 20 of them are done um, Depending on your computer, your environment, you could potentially just run through all 20 at the same time. Um, that wasn't a very interesting test. <laughs> um, also, the benefit um, when you look at these side by side with going for each object parallel is you don't need to worry about handling the job that it creates. Um, so you don't need to go and explicitly say, wait for them to finish, receive the output. You just get that. Um, so those are the two scripts. And we're going to test them both just on PowerShell 7. This one we have to test on PowerShell 7 because it wasn't available on uh, Windows PowerShell. So let us run that. Doing it 10 times, good. And pull up the dashboard. So posh RS job has come back at about 15 seconds per iteration. So it does take many, many seconds for these to go through. Um, and for each object still tracking away. So we'll come back in when that one is done. And with eerily similar timing, for each object comes back 0.01% difference between them. That is surprisingly consistent. Um, in my testing, I got that, I uh, got something very similar to that. I assumed it was a fluke. <laughs> um, turns out it's not. I believe, I don't know for sure. I have a feeling the for each object parallel uses run spaces, which happens to be what the RS in posh RS job means. So behind the scenes, they're using the same mechanism for running in parallel. So it's not too surprising that they've lined up like that, but that's eerie. Now, 
So take away there. There's no clear winner between the two options. I still use Start RS Job because I've been using it for years. It works in PowerShell, uh, Windows PowerShell, which I still have to support. Um, so I just use that. Unless I'm bashing away something on the command prompt in PowerShell 7, um, in which case sometimes I'll just use that because um, it's quicker than having to worry about this stuff. Um, from a typing perspective, not from an execution perspective, obviously. Now, the final one is more just curiosity on my part. New feature in PowerShell 7 was the ternary operator, which makes some developers very happy for their inclusion. It's another way, effectively, of representing a if-else logic construct. Um, and it left some PowerShell people going, eh? So I think a valid question is, does, is it faster? Some people consider it easier to read. Um, some people don't. Um, but if there, is there an actual material, be, measurable benefit of using it? So for our if-else example on the left here, I've got a random variable which just has a string in it. Uh, the contents of which doesn't really matter. Um, then I do some logic with if to check if that variable has the word matter in it. If it does, we assign the string yes and it does matter. Otherwise, we assign no. The script on the right does exactly the same thing but with a ternary so if you've not seen that before i've got my logic on the left this outputs a true or a false then there's a question mark what happens after the question mark is what happens if the logic was true so in this case it outputs the string yes then there's a colon there which is the else so if it's if this is false, then we get the no back. And again, we assign that into does matter. And the comparison is on our string, on our random variable, um, which doesn't really matter. So last test here, we're comparing both of those scripts, both on PowerShell 7. Because there's not much happening between the two, um, I've cranked up the number of iterations just a touch um, because they should run lightning fast. So let's run that, get over to my dashboard. Right, if else comes back 0 0.02 milliseconds. Told you they're quick. And the ternary comes back technically faster at 0 0.025 milliseconds um <laughs> from a math perspective that's a five percent speed increase <laughs> but we're talking sub sub millisecond differences um <laughs> just use which one looks good to you <laughs> I personally use ternaries if I know my code's only running in PowerShell 7 and it's a very, very, very simple um, comparison. Even for me, that's a bit long. <laughs> um, actually, no, that's my screen's just blowing up bigger than normal. Yeah, that, that's about my maximum for what I would use a ternary for. Um, anything longer than that, more complex than that, I just use an if house. And evidently I'm not losing out on performance because of it. So that is all the code done. Let's head back to the presentation. So question is, can you just take these results 
and run with them. Assume their gospel um, and uh, just blindly go, All right, I'm going to use .NET everywhere because it's faster than commandlets. No, don't do that. There is a balance between, uh, like that screenshot from Google, there is a balance between convenience and speed. Um, PowerShell's goal isn't speed, though there are things happening all the time to try and speed things up, make a nice user experience, etc. And there are options for you to get that speed if you want it. Um, you do have to think about memory and processor constraints. Sometimes you've got to do things slower because the fast way is going to balloon out and consume all your memory and then you, everything on your machine's worse off because of it. If you go blindly implementing some of this stuff, for example, if you were to roll in posh RS job and you're not used to how it works, you might break an existing script. Don't do that. Um, so it worked for me in my environment. We mentioned this at the start. Your environment's going to be different. Um, and your environment may have a different opinion of things than, than mine does. Uh, the key takeaways, to be clear, this, this list is taken directly from 2018. Don't make assumptions. Don't have preconceived notions that you rigidly stick to. Don't see things that I've run today and take them as gospel. F try the stuff yourself and work out what works for you. Measure twice. Um, I saw today some results I wasn't expecting to see. I saw results leading up to this that I definitely wasn't expecting to see and I apologize to anyone on Discord that I had a bit of a rant at about it. Um, revisit. And that's sort of the nature of um, this talk in general. Things change. There's new versions of PowerShell every month or two. Every month. They've been coming thick and fast lately. Um, and they are always tweaking the internals. There's some people specifically looking at speed increases in certain areas. Things change. Modules change. PowerShell changes. Windows changes. Um, your environment changes. Um, so you never know how something that runs poorly today might, or runs quickly today even, might run in 6, 12, 3 years time. Oh, wrong way. Um, and we mentioned breaking working scripts before. Worry about optimization after it's working. It's hard enough writing these scripts, getting the automation done, writing the documentation, writing the help, uh, writing good git commits because we're all using source control. Um, the optimization for me is something that's fun and I do it after I've got the job done. And test your code. Um, this helps with the breaking your code. If you're testing your code, you'll know that you've broken it. <laughs> so once again, thank you for coming to this session. It was a lot of fun to put together in the end. <laughs> there was a period of frustration there in the lead up, but we got there. Um, at the time of recording... That link on screen isn't live, but I'll make sure it is by the time this session happens. So if you want to get this deck, demo code, the module I ran, the dashboard, um, head to toast.click slash PSH2021 um, and you'll get it there. So thanks again and enjoy the rest of summit.